Hi, I'm Mark Cleggong and welcome to the Experience Wedding Series and uh, today we're talking why become a second shooter at a wedding. Uh, well, there's three main things I think with everything in life and becoming a wedding photographer uh, adds a lot of pressure in and it's not for everybody anyway. And in these three tips, we're kind of really talking and raveling that a second shooter position at a wedding might be the right thing for you instead of actually being the principal photographer. There's nothing wrong in being a second shooter rebebba in anything that you're doing, as long as either you're employed to do it or you want to do it because of your passion for a hobby or a kind of a second career choice and so on. Um, you've really got to think, though, about um, what your... Uh, mental state is, your physical state is, and your enthusiasm is as well. It's it, Being in business for yourself is not for ev everybody. Remember that right from the beginning. And uh, you should really love what you're doing instead of just doing it because you need to earn a couple of bucks on the side or whatever it will be and things really. So my tip one, of course, has got to be it takes the pressure off you <clears throat> in the organization and the control of the wedding photography. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, um, being the principal wedding photographer at some stage, uh, whether it's in the organization before the wedding, whether it's the organization on the wedding day, but there's going to be some organization going on whether you like it or not. Even as a reportage photographer, there's still the meetings with the bride and groom, meetings with the venue, uh, kind of arrival on the day, making sure everything kind is 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 run into uh, to plan, uh, uh, not so much you or control, in that plan but at least you're being in that plan so you need to know exactly what is going on and that might not be you so uh, with that in mind then of course the role of the second shooter comes into play now I'm a photographer that has basically been in this uh, industry for a very long time since the 80s 1980s and I've always had assistant photographers or photographers in training accompany me to weddings I've also had photographers over my career who are just kind of carrying my bag. They're coming along to actually see what basically happens on my kind of wedding and what I do and so on. I've had other pro photographers, very, very good pro photographers, again, do the very same thing. Why? Um, because once upon a time, there wasn't a thing called YouTube or the Photographer Academy where you can see behind the scenes of real events. And one of the things that we did when we set up the Photographer Academy in the beginning was to make sure that you could see behind the scenes with real photographers and real time pressures and so on. And I would say that if you haven't watched any of my Confetti and Lace series, I definitely put that on your to-do list because that will really show what the principal photographer, the main photographer, is basically doing at a wedding. And we uh, recorded a whole seri a series of them so you can see the different types of wedding as well. So going back to the tip one, um, why it takes the pressure off you, it basically allows you to be freer. A second photographer, though, shouldn't just copy what the principal photographer is doing. That's a, a just a waste of energy, a waste of life, in my opinion. A second shoot, a shooter's main priority is to get the images that the other photographer cannot get or get them from a totally different ang angle with a, to a totally different look and feel, perhaps, at times, so you can create that difference for the bride and groom. And you should, by yourself, be an added value into the wedding and not just... Um, uh, you know, being along for kind of backup, you know, backing up the group shots or whatever. So think about your role as a second shooter is not as a, uh, just as a trainee, but you should be a core part of the photography day. And if it's not, I would encourage you to try and make it your part, e even if you're not having the pressure of the control in other wedding things. Being a second shooter in tip two really does allow you to kind of practice and develop your style. Um, so it allows you to kind of, if you're really wanting to be a second shooter at a wedding, it allows you to re research and basically kind of uh, look at some ideas and bring those skills to the wedding. So you're hunting for images. Uh, you know, like you, you see in this image. Okay, so I'm a photographer, as I've said already, that has been in this industry for a very long time. However, I've never relied on a second shooter at a wed wedding to back up what I do. So the image that we're seeing here where I'm looking down on a bride and groom from a, sta a staircase, I've instigated that image from the ground and I've shot my images of them dancing and so on in, in the client's 
home, but then I've also run up the stairs and look at things in a totally different perspective to allow me to get that second kind of look and feel as if there is a second photographer. Um, how can I do this? Well, I work too fast. Can I still do it at my age? I'm going to be limited because obviously physical ability uh, and, and kind of I'm not as young as I once were, put like that. Um, but it should allow you to really develop and look at new ideas and styles that you can be bringing to the actual wedding. You might even be using the role as a second shooter at the wedding, not only to develop a, a new style, but to develop a completely new business for yourself. So, you know, whilst you're with the principal photographer and you're working with them to actually back them up or get a different ang ang angle, you might be actually in the making of completely creating a new type of business for you. So if you go into weddings, looking at more like a reportage photographer specifically, instead of as the principal photographer with the control. And of course, uh, one of the benefits with the lack of pressure and with the, you know, the ability to be able to get great images from different angles, it allows you to really develop your camera skills and learn to shoot a little bit more variety and a fast variety as well. And then I think um, becoming a second shooter at a wedding, it's really perfect for those who really don't want to actually make it a, a full-time leap into professional wedding photography. Um, I've had quite a few photographers with me over the years um, who basically have very good jobs, but they love the world of photography. They love the world of wedding photography. They didn't want the pressure themselves of doing the wedding. And so uh, for them to carry my bag on the day, to kind of do a few shots of the couples, um, the guests as they arrive at the church door, to actually get some different angles, was a way that they could actually hone in on their hob hobby, develop a, a kind of a working technique with clients. And yes, pretty much all of them went away and they developed their own wedding careers. Um, but they, they look at it from a different perspective within things really. And being able to carry the bag of a really decent uh, wedding photographer will allow you to completely free yourself in a different direction. So if you're carrying the bag for a certain photographer for a couple of years, you'll basically be anticipating the style of images and things. So the image that we've got on screen now, you know, is just a couple and they've been put into a room by themselves while all the guests are going down to sit and so on with it. Photographer is not allowed in the room as, as a rule, but I know it's probably going to be their most relaxed during the course of the day and I've got some amazing images of the couple it's one of the uh, weddings you can watch on the photographer academy um, but it's also my job to actually try and get an image so just um, jumping into the room once the wedding plan has gone and trying to get some images but again observing the scene instead of actually concentrating on just the couple and expression looking at me so I'm taking the perfect out and I'm looking for a moment in time and for those second shooter photographers, that's what I would say that if you're not really looking to leap into the pro weddings, try and find the emotion on the day of the imagery, uh, especially if you're not involved in any of the control. Make sure you understand your role at the wedding, make sure you absolutely deliver the images that your pro photographer is needing you to do, uh, and make sure you're shooting to a storyboard of some kind. So. When the two sets of images mix together, you truly are getting a great collection of images. And those are my quick tips on becoming a second shooter at a wedding. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to check out the other Experience for Experience wedding. I'm Mark Cleghorn for the Photographer Academy. See you next time. Bye-bye.